sorry. I didn't mean to scare you, but are you all right, miss? Well, yes, I'm just sleepy. I've been driving all night. Oh, for a minute I thought there was something wrong. Well, there is with my car, and I'm in an awful hurry. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, I don't know. It just stopped and it won't go again. You're not out of gas, are you? <laughs> no, I've got half the tank. Well, let's take a look. Thank you. You're a Mountie, aren't you? That's right. I thought I recognized the uniform. Of course, I've only seen it in movies. Say, uh, tell me, is this always gets his man stuff true or just a lot of movie hokum? That happens to be the motto of the service. Oh, how noble. Well, where's your man or didn't you get him yet? Have you got any tools? Oh, sure. A screwdriver. Is that all? Well, how many do you need? Why don't you get a rope and tow me in? Mike's not a plow horse, he's a saddle horse. Well, then why don't you get in the saddle and ride to the nearest garage and have them tow me in? There isn't a garage within a day's ride from here. Step on the starter, will you please? I'd be delighted, but it won't do any good. I've tried that for hours. It could be the carburetor needs adjusting for this high altitude. Will you try it, please? It's a waste of time, Mountie. <laughs> Why don't you stick to horses? Now try it. Like you shouldn't be out in this part of the country alone. Oh, I don't know. They told me if I got in any trouble, all I had to do was whistle and the mountain pump up. I didn't even have to whistle this time, did I? Bye. I just want to get to him as soon as possible. Yeah, well, that's perfectly natural. I understand. Reporting back, sir. How'd you make out of Brian? I overtook them near Medicine Lake. And? Unfortunately, I had to kill them, sir. Resisted arrest? Mm, definitely. They both pulled guns and tried to shoot the way clear. Too bad. Ordinarily, Miss Owens, we try to take him alive. But this gang has murdered three men, and I told Brian not to take any chances. There's nothing else, sir. I'll go take care of my horse. No, wait a minute. Uh, Miss Owens, this is Trooper O'Brien. We've already met, sir. Yes, so we have. I guess I forgot to mention it. You forgot your screwdriver, too, Miss Owens. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry I was in a bad mood. You see, my car stalled, and Trooper O'Brien was nice enough to fix it. Oh, well... Fixing a car or delivering a baby, it's all in the day's work to a Canadian mounted policeman. <laughs> uh, Miss Owens wants to go up to Canoga Valley to visit her uncle. He packed in there with some engineers about four months ago to survey some timberland. That's one place you can't drive your car to, Miss Owens. Oh, why not? It's a very rough country. However, we can lend you a horse and some equipment. You'll need a guy, too. I'd appreciate it. Uh, Roberts would be a fine man for that, sir. He knows that country backwards. Yes, I'd send Roberts, but he's out Simon River way. Well, how about Whitney, sir? Oh, no, he went back east. Left two days ago. Well, no, I'm afraid it's up to you. I want to send you to Canoga Valley anyhow. I've only had one report from Sergeant Means since he was transferred up there. You know Means? 
Only by reputation, sir. A little hard to get along with. Cracked up in the war. I want you to check on him. Yes, sir. Anything else, sir? Yes. I want you to hear this. To the mounted police of Chinook Pass, dear sir, beg to announce that the creek that used to flow past my place don't flow anymore. It used to be full of water and fish, now it's full of rocks and sand. This is very serious to me and my horses. Please to investigate this. I already spoke to the Mountie in this section, but he ain't done nothing about it so far. Please get it fixed, PDQ, thanks. Signed, Poodles Hannaford. P.S. I'd fix it myself, but every time I go upstream, somebody takes a shot at me, hoping you are the same. Poodles. Now, you better show this to Means and find out what it's all about. Yes, sir. What horse shall I saddle for Miss Owens? Uh, take Duke. What part of the valley do you want to go to, Miss Owens? A place called Morgan's Post. Uh, be ready to leave first thing in the morning. Yes, well, sir. I'd, I'd like to go this afternoon. Well, that's up to O'Brien. <laughs> Well, it'll take me 35 minutes to reissue my horse and about 10 minutes to pack and saddle. Of course, I never sleep. Oh, 45 minutes, that would be fine. I'll be ready. Thank you, Inspector. Pleasure, miss. Oh, I'll uh, try not to be too much trouble. I'm sure you will. What did I ever do to you, Mac? Well, I thought I was giving you a break. If I were ten years younger, I'd take it myself. Well, I sure wish you were ten years younger. What you say, Mr. Owens? Hello, Pierre. What you say about the money, huh? Yeah, what do we get paid? Now, stop worrying. I give you my word that $20,000 will be here tomorrow. Maybe even this afternoon. Who's bringing it? My niece. Alone? Yes. All that dough? That's right. Sacre bleu, Mr. Owens. You are, how you say it, you are nuts. <laughs> Morgan, give me a shot of bourbon. What do you have, boys? Yeah, make mine the same. What are you going to do with those? Just hang them over the saddle horn. Oh, just a minute. I'll take this one. more comfortable if you take your boots off. We always sleep with our feet to the fire. Oh, just a minute. Where do I sleep? Right there. Where do you sleep? Right here. How cozy. Feet to the fire.
you're about finished, I'll go water the horses. All right. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Do you see it anywhere? If you keep on chatting about it all day, you'll be over that second ridge of mountains. Here it comes, lady. That's the man who stole my bag, but I can't find it anywhere. Whoever shot him must have taken it. But I've got to get it back. It's important. What was in it that's so important? Well, it's got... What? Well, what does a girl generally carry in her bag? I wouldn't know. Well, that's what was in it. That doesn't make sense. What oh, doesn't? That a man should be killed over a bag of woman's, uh, uh, uh... Listen, Miss Owens, this is no time for comedy. What was in that bag? Money. How much? Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand? Why didn't you tell me I've been escorting a traveling bank? Because it was none of your business. It certainly was my business. And it will be till I recover it. Come on. Sorry, Miss Owens, but that horse is too lame for you to ride any further. What do we do now? Stay here till he gets well? There's only one thing we can do. Ride double. <laughs> Thank you. I just as soon walk. We've still got 15 miles to go. That far? That's right. I'd still rather walk. Suit yourself. Thank you. 
I thought you said something about walking. Okay, you win. Come and get me. doesn't it? Quite a fancy rider. Jill be the best bareback rider in the world. Ask Blanket Sue training her. Dad was the top rider in the circuses for years. What are you folks doing in this part of the country? Doctor ordered me a long rest. After I got all smashed up in a fall. Oh, I see. How far is Morgan's post? About ten miles. You can't miss it if you keep straight on this trail. Oh, I wonder whether you'd rent me one of your horses. Well, we couldn't let you have Prince. He's strictly a Rosenback. And he's not broken to the saddle. I suppose we could let her have Bullet. That's providing you can ride him. Well, I'll take my chances. Okay, come along. I've got a lame horse here. I'm going to leave him with you for a couple of days. I'll take care of him for you. And what's more, I'll, I'll fix his leg. Fair enough. Don't worry about Bullet or me. We'll get along fine. I'm Trooper O'Brien from Chinook. I'll be responsible for your horse. Chinook, I sent a letter there about my crick. Well, then you must be Mr. Hannaford. Sure. That's my daughter, Jill. How do you do? Oh. Well, say, how about my crick? I'll look into that on the way back, Mr. Hannaford. Right. Say, here's your suitcase. And don't That's worry right. about your horse. I'm not worrying about my horse. It's the water that ain't in the creek that bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Dutch. Yeah? We got a new copper. Yeah. That must be Don Owens' niece with him. Can you tell me where I can find John Owens? John Owens? Well, yeah, that's his cabin right over there. Thanks. Hi. Uncle John! Yoo-hoo! Uncle John! Hello. Kate, you're a wonder girl. I knew you'd make it. Well, I almost didn't. Uh, this is Trooper O'Brien. He chaperoned me up here. All right, Trooper. I'm afraid I didn't do a very good job of it, sir. Your niece was robbed on the way up here. Robbed? Did they get they the... They got every cent. Well, what kind of a mounted policeman are you to stand by Just and let a... Just a second, Mr. Owens. If your niece had told me she was carrying that much money, it never would have happened. Do you suppose he recognizes? No, he never got close enough to see our faces. Just the same. He's one money too many in this valley to suit me. Well, that puts me in a fine spot with Pierre here. He's the man I'm buying the timberland from. Maybe if you don't get money quick, you know buy it all, huh? Can I help what happened? Now, don't worry. I'll send for more money right away. Well, you catch money quick. I can wait much longer to close deal. <laughs> well, you see the position that puts me in. He's liable to walk out of the whole deal unless I take up my option right away. I understand you wanted this money in small bills. Why? Because Pierre doesn't like large ones. He's like most of the people up in this section. One more thing, Mr. Owens. Did anyone around here know your niece was bringing this money to you? Yes, all of my men did. Part of it was for their pay, but I'm sure they're all trustworthy. Maybe so, but I'm sure Sergeant Means will know more about that. 
Well, thank you for bringing me up here. I won't forget the trip for a long time. Neither will I. Awfully sorry about this. Well, half as sorry as I'll be if this deal doesn't go through. I'll bet five. I'll call. Please, please. I'll call. Three queens. <laughs> Three aces. Up to the jack, boys. Wait. All right, deal me out the next hand. I want to get a fresh pack. Your deal, Sandy. What are you doing? Nothing. How many times have I told you to keep your nose out of my business? Oh! Now look, get up! a little free with his knife, Sergeant. Oh, beating your wife again, eh, Whitey? Yes, Sergeant. He was afraid Shut that up. I... That'll do. Go over to my office and wait for me. We'll see this doesn't happen again. Come on, Cooper. I take it your Sergeant means, sir. That's correct. Cooper O'Brien, as you know. What brings you here? Inspector McGrath's orders. Hmm? I accompanied Mr. Owen's niece up here and was also told to investigate the complaint of a homesteader. Uh, Mr. Hannaford. About his creek drying up? That's right, Sergeant. Well, you can go back and reassure the inspector. It's just a case of the spring that feeds the creek pinching out. But I understand someone's been shooting at him. Well, he's been trespassing. I warned him about that. I see. The inspector's also been worried about you, Sergeant. He hasn't had a report for two or three months. What's he want me to do, write him some love letters? <laughs> we haven't had any trouble up here. None worth reporting. There's another matter, sir. Yes? Miss Owens was robbed of $20,000 on our way up here. Is that so? Yes, sir. Not very flattering to you, O'Brien. No, it isn't, sir. But with your permission, I'd like to stay here and... Never mind. I'll get on the case myself. I'd like to lend a hand, sir. Not necessary. Return to your station and just hope that the inspector won't break you for what's happened. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, if you happen to meet any young ladies asleep in cars, don't wake them up. Don't worry.
A lot sooner than I expected. By the way, I found out why there's no more water in your creek, Mr. Hannaford. Sergeant Means tells me the spring that feeds it went dry. That's what he told me. But I couldn't find out for myself. What do you mean? Well, every time I step out to follow the creek up into this timberland, somebody takes a shot at me. What did Sergeant Means say about that? Well, he said that the timberland was, was private property and that I was trespassing. It all sounds phony to me. Nobody ever took a shot at me before the creek went dry. Is that so? Yeah. Maybe I'd better take a run up there. Which way is it? Why, right up there, the other side of the hill. Wait, I'll go along and show you. All right. I've got a horse all saddled for you. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, that's Bullet. He's bucked me off three times already. <laughs> I'll stick to old Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Hannaford, would you please take care of Bullet? Sure, I'll take him back to the bar. Thanks. Uh, And it used to be plumb full of trout, too. Let's follow it on up. I've lost him, Poodles. Yes, and you almost lost me, too. The last time I saw him, he was headed towards Morgan's post. Let's take a ride over there. These horses have been ridden lately. Maybe he's left it around behind. Maybe so. You go inside and keep the boys amused. I'll take a look. I'll do my best, but I ain't promising. Hello, folks. Hello there. And you, Mr. Morgan. And how are you, Mr. Anderford? Uh, say, would you like to see a little trick in magic? That I would. I, and you, gentlemen, would you like to see a little trick of magic? Sure. sure. I'll show it to you. Now, here we are. What color are those handkerchiefs, gentlemen? Green and orange. I think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now, what color are they? Green and orange. I still think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hannigan, would you mind showing me how to do that trick for myself? For you, Mr. Morgan, a private performance. What are the colors of those handkerchiefs now? Green and orange. Mr. Morgan, you're wrong.
That's a very clever trick, Mr. Danaford. Enough of that, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan, I will now show you a trick that you have never seen before. I'll be very interested in watching it. Right. Gentlemen, gentlemen, watch this trick, please. Everybody. Everybody watch this. Mr. Morgan, will you buy me a drink if I drink it from here? I beg your pardon, Mr. Danaford. Would you say that again? Will you buy me a drink if I drink it from here? <laughs> Naturally, I shall. If you can do that trick, I shall buy you a big slug of bourbon. Good. Gentlemen, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> to your health, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> well, strike me pink. Hello. Well, hello. I thought you'd be back at your station by now. Well, I would have Don't been, tell but... me you came back on my account. Well, yes and no. Did you ever see this before? Handle of a bag? Do you think it could be off your bag? The one that was stolen? Well, it could. Where'd you find it? In the ash heap in back of Whitey's. That means someone around here stole the money. That's right. Well, that's hard to believe. Oh, I'd better tell someone about Don't it. Don't mention this to anyone. Not even your uncle. Because I want to go back and... Excuse me a minute. Just a second. I want to ask you a few questions. It won't do you any good. Someone burned a traveling bag in your stove. Who was it? It ain't my stove. Anyhow, I don't know, and I'd be afraid to tell you if I did. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, yes, there is. We're being followed right now. I know it. Just keep walking. Whitey. Drop it. That's an old trick, Whitey. I wasn't sure you'd fall for it. Hmm. That's a pretty big roll you're carrying. You've got some explaining to do. Start walking. I think this man is connected with the robbery of Miss Owens. That's a lie. I didn't steal any money from anybody. What makes you think so? The stolen money was in new 10 and 20 dollar bills. Take a look at these. I took them out of his pocket. What's more, Miss Owens has identified this handle as the one that was on her bag. Someone burned the stolen bag in the stove over at the post. That's certainly a new angle on the case. Where did you get this money? I want it in a crap game. From whom? With my yank who drove by a couple of days ago. He looked like a prospector. I don't even remember his name. I can easily verify that. On the other hand, O'Brien, I'm not used to having my orders disobeyed. How come you didn't return to your station? Well, I started back, sir, and someone took a shot at me. While trying to find out who it was, I stumbled onto a clue to the robbery. Why didn't you tell me this? I didn't have a chance. Things happened too fast. Hmm. Well, I must congratulate you on your work. But my orders still stand. Return to your station. I'll take charge of this man in the investigation from here on. Is that clear? Yes, sir.
you find anything out? Yes, I think I did. I just had a run in with a fellow named Whitey Yeager. He was carrying a large roll of bills on him. I think it's part of your uncle's money. What are you going to do now? Go back to my station. Go back? Without clearing it up? There's nothing I can do about it. Sergeant Means insists on handing the investigation alone. He's ordered me back to Chinook. Oh, it doesn't that seem very peculiar? Well, no. I, I've had peculiar orders before. <laughs> Such as uh, chaperoning peculiar females? I've had worse than that. Really? That wasn't so bad. In fact, at times, I almost enjoyed it. You don't say? It's going to be very dull going back alone. I won't mind it a bit. Oh, but I will. Well, when you're ready to leave, why don't you whistle? Maybe another mounted policeman will show up. Did you find out anything? Plenty. I think the men who robbed Miss Owens are right here. Come on, I'll tell you about it on the way back. Coming into the place where they took a shot at me. Listen. Ain't nothing but a plane. Yeah. Do they fly over here very often? I hear them two or three times a week. Is that right? Sounds like he's coming in for a landing. Never know no plane to land here in the valley. Throw a couple of shots over there, Pluto, and keep busy. Yeah, shooting at us. This is my land, and I want no trespassers. Well, you've got a roll of new $10 bills, too, huh? Yeah. What's that got to do with trespassing? Not a thing. But where did you get them? Well, I play dice. You must have been in the same game as Whitey. Gold dust? Yeah. I suppose you won this in the dice game, too. Oh, sure, sure I win. Oh, no, you don't. You lose. Stick out your hand. All right, you get off. What's the trouble, Pierre? You tell this Mountie I got right to shoot, to keep fellas off my land. Well, of course you have. Didn't you see his signs warning trespassers off, O'Brien? The police aren't trespassers, Mr. Owens. Mm, I know shoot at you. I shoot at him. Yes, and you're down near head. Take it easy, Poodles. Now, you make him let me go, or the Timberland deal is off, you understand? Now, wait a minute, Pierre. We'll get this straightened out. Look here, O'Brien. Sorry, I Mr. Owens. Come on, you inside. You got a gun, Morgan? Yes, sir. Get it. Yes, sir. Here. I want you to keep an eye on this man and turn him over to Sergeant Means when he gets here. Keep him for the sergeant, huh? That's right. 
Right. Now I know why they've been shooting at you every time you went upstream. I got an idea, too. That gold. Exactly. That's where your stream went dry, Poodles. They've been using the water to wash sand. Could be. Let's take a ride up there. You've got to get up there and warn the boys that the Monty's on the way to the diggings. Sure, sure. Get these handcuffs off me. Right. You do just as I tell you, Frenchy. Now hold them down tight. There. Just half a more. Now just hold it tight, Frenchy. I might fix that Monty so he no stick his nose in our business no more. You better go warn the boys first. Don't. You may need some help. Don't worry. I fix. Sounds like a plane warming up over there. Yeah. You follow the stream bed on up, Poodles. All right. I'm going over and have a look at that plane. Good. See you later. He's on the way up to the tickets. You go tip off the boss. Come on, Pierre, we'll get him.
I go down and finish him. Pierre locked up at the post. We're going back and have a few explanations. Yeah, boy? Come on down here. about it myself, but I'm going to talk to someone who should be able to clear everything up. Meanwhile, you wait for me at Hannaford. Oh, nothing doing. You'll only stick your chin out again. You know, at times you're a very obstinate young woman. Doggone it. I've been looking all over for you, O'Brien. Well, I'm glad you showed up. I want you to take this stubborn young lady back to your ranch and keep her there. Well, I won't go, and that's all there is to it. I've got another pair of handcuffs. Matt O'Brien, you're the most unreasonable man I ever met. Better come along as the law says, or I may have to shoot your ears off. And he's not kidding. He's just the type that would do it. yourself. I told you I was through, Whitey, and I mean it. I stood for all your dirty crookedness, but when it comes to murder... What do you mean by that? I found a grave in the woods this morning. Who's buried in it? How should I know? I found your lucky piece right next to it. See? What's the next move? I suppose you're going to squeal at the mountains. No, I'm not, but I'm getting out. Drop that gunner and I'll shoot. Is he dead? Yes. Then listen, Marty. There's something you ought to know. He and Ollie and Dust. Mr. Owens. Well, what's the matter now? Your niece wants to see you, Mr. Owens. She's over at the Hannaford Ranch. What's happened? Did you have an accident? Well, not exactly, but you'd better come over and see her. Well, can't you tell me what happened? Not here, but I'll ride over with you. Okay, I'll be ready in a minute. Good. I'll be right back. Did the sergeant pick up my prisoner, Morgan? Well, uh, uh, before the sergeant got here, I had to go out and chop some wood. And while I was gone, and before I got... And when you came back, he'd escaped, eh? Huh? Uh, that's right. He'd vanished into thin hair. Well, it doesn't matter now. Listen, Morgan, if I give you a message for Sergeant Means, do you think you can keep it in your mind until you see him? I'll write it down. Fine. Write this. I've just arrested Mr. Owens, and I'm taking him over to Hannaford's. My word, that is a fine kettle of fish.
broken your neck. I'm going to leave circus riding to Jill. <laughs> May I tell you what happened? I haven't told your uncle anything yet. No, he, he said you wanted to see me. I didn't say that. That's funny. I thought you did. Well, I hope you haven't arrested him, too. No, but I'm doing that right now. <laughs> you're not kidding me. No, and you're not kidding me, Mr. Owens. You're under arrest. Are you serious? I was never more serious in my life. He didn't come up here to buy Timberland. He bought a gang of thugs up here to work some rich placer claims. That's a lie. Of course it is. What do you call stealing gold from the Canadian government and smuggling it across the border? I don't believe a word of it. Come on inside. Uncle John, don't let him talk to you like this. Don't it's worry. ridiculous. Don't everything will be all right. means he'll stop this nonsense. He'll stay right here. Sit down. The reason Hannaford's Creek went dry is because your uncle and his gang diverted it to use for their washing trays. If you hadn't been so busy rescuing me yesterday, you'd have seen those trays and the rest of their equipment in the ravine. I suppose that plane was part of their plan. I can't figure it out. They've been flying supplies and material in and flying the gold list out. Isn't that right, Mr. Owens? Is it? I think so. The fellow held you up yesterday and the pair that killed him are all part of your uncle's outfit. Working a double cross. I don't believe that, O'Brien. You weren't in on that. But I'll prove it as soon as Sergeant Means gets here. Pierre, he was a French-Canadian who originally discovered the claim. But there were government restrictions against working it. So he went to the States and contacted your uncle. I, I can't believe that. Why don't you ask him whether it's true or not? Tell him he's got it all wrong. Here comes Sergeant Means. Brian, what are you trying to pull off here? That's what I'd like to know. Didn't Morgan tell you? He told me enough. I'm sorry about this, Mr. Owens. You're guilty of insubordination, O'Brien. I ordered you to return to your station. Now I'm placing you under arrest. You're not placing me under arrest for anything. But I'm placing you under arrest for murder. For the murder of Sergeant Means, the man you're impersonating. Get his gun, please. What do you think? Should we close in? No, let's wait and see what happens. I didn't know the real Sergeant Means personally, but I do know that during the First World War he had a finger shot off his left hand. I just saw the real Sergeant Means' body. He'd been buried in back of Hardy Yeager's place. Well, I guess that's that. Mind if I get my hat? Get away from that door.
So you brought some of your boys with you, huh? Well, that's fine. We'll get them all at once. Saved me a lot of trouble. Now, Mr. Owens, when I pick up Morgan at the post, that'll put an end to your little racket. Uh, you want me over there, too? No, I think I'll put you on probation. stopping for? Yes. Well. You see, it isn't only a Mountie who always gets his man. Mountie. That's one thing you're going to have to learn. Mounted policemen don't like to be called Mountie. <laughs> 